Hi, uh, James here. Today we're going to be uh, doing Question by the Moody Blues. This is Justin Hayward's classic that he combined two different songs into one to make this, well, in my opinion, a masterpiece. So, but uh, anyways, uh, now I'm not here for any strumming patterns. I'm just showing you the basics of the song. If you want to uh, try Justin Hayward's strumming technique, why, you know, knock yourself out, more power to you. But uh, basically what you have to be in to start with is uh, called open C tuning. Now, if uh, you can match my strings right now with me if you want, or you can go to the top of the screen here to my videos, and I've got a separate lesson I can do it, and you know, show you all in details and how to do it with a tuner or whatnot, and how to do it uh, other ways. So, but anyway, so we'll just match yours up with mine now, and the E string gets dropped all the way down to a C. A string drop to a G. D string drop to a C. G string stays the same. B string raised to a C. string stays the same. Okay, now we are going by uh, the very best of the Moody Blues version, which is uh, the one with the dover, dove on the cover and the stars in the background. And uh, basically, if you could just go to the top of the YouTube page and type in Question Moody Blues, and it's right there, one of the album covers, and it's, in my opinion, the best version. So, okay, now, uh, we're going to break this down into riffs, bar chords, and then the chords. Uh, so, so, we're going to start out with uh, riff one, what I'm labeling as riff one, the 12th fret G and E strings. And we're just going to do the top of four strings. Slide it down to the 10th fret, same strings, 7th fret, and 5th fret. Riff 1, again, 12th, 10th, 7th, 5th. Okay, uh, then uh, we're going to break down the bar chords. Uh, this bar 3, uh, barring the 3rd fret, this is an E flat chord. Uh, and we're calling it B3. And then barring the fifth, four, uh, fifth fret is an F chord, uh, we are calling it B5. B2 is uh, barring the second fret, uh, this is a D chord, and we're calling it B2. And I'm just playing, you know, the top four strings here. I'm just putting my thumb. And then, um, but I'm, yeah, I'm just putting my thumb around for habit, you know, habit. But uh, then we're just going to use this uh, bar in the seventh fret here, just once during the song. It's just like a little improv improvisation that I threw in there. And this is a G chord, and we're calling B7. Don't get confused with a B7 chord. It's just B7 that I'm labeling it as. Okay, then we're going to break down the um, chords in the song. Uh, as far as the G7 chord, I'll have all this stuff labeled on your screen and up on my sheet, my typed up version. Uh, G7, this G7 chord slid up to what I'm labeling as a, a C3. It's just a different version of a C and it's uh, on the third fret. Those two gets slid up and down throughout, you know, some of the songs. So get used to that. Uh, then uh, we have an open C chord. Now we're going to be playing mostly on this song just the higher, higher strings until you come to like to the end of the, of the verse, uh, as far as uh, um, 
has has all been meant for you. But otherwise, uh, you're going to be uh, doing just the higher strings when you know you're in the part of the song where it's. Oops. Until unless you know you come to an end. Okay, now uh, that part that I just did, uh, we're going to start out with a D formation. But in this tuning, it's called a C diminished, and I'm labeling it as C lowercase d. And uh, I hold this D formation like this. You can hold it any way you want, but I just find that easier for me to switch to the next chord, which is an F chord. Because it has an F, A, and a C in it. And then that goes to the open C. So. We would never get an answer. Now, here's a little add on that I don't have included in the song. Uh, it's, you know, why do we never? C diminished, F, C, and then a little add on. It's just kind of hammer on, hammer on. Why do we never get an answer when we're knocking at the door? And then that knocking at the door part, you can, you know, do a thing on your guitar, or I just kind of throw in the bass there to just to. Uh, because it's kind of hard to include the uh, without breaking up the strumming pattern. And uh, then there's just one little riff left, and uh, that is, we're gonna, I label that as uh, a riff two, and that's just this little part that top three strings open, first fret, third fret, and that just comes into the. It's not the way that you say when you do. Things to me, it's more the way you really mean it when you tell me what will be, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, now, um, the as far as there's one part of the song where you know comes into that I'm looking for, and that's just basically uh, you know, like an open C, I'm, and then the F. Look, and then the ing is another open C. Not not all the strings, just the higher ones. And then the G7. For someone to change my life. C, and then you just throw in this little F on off. And then again, I'm open. I'm F. Look, open. Ling. That's the ing part. And then four G7. Four. That's the part where the first time around it stays high, me, and then the second time when you come to that, uh, uh, because it's that goes from uh, from the bar five to C three. The second time it's going to slide down to a G seven where he goes, um, and if and if you could see what it's done to me. That's where he lowers the voice and then shoots down to a G7 chord instead of the C3 chord. And uh, that is pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, uh, and then I'll show you my typed up version here. And basically the end of the song, I just, um, you know, do the... Uh, kind of end it like that. You can end it any way you want. Okay, so first we're going to show you this typed up version. Now here is the uh, index. Oops. Okay. Now you can pause that and study it. Hopefully you can read that. Yeah. 
There we go. <laughs> Damn it. Alright, yeah, so basically it's just riff one. Third time you do the Oz. Then the G7. Don't forget the little add on. Why do we never get an answer? And so on on that. And then uh, that all continues on until you come to that little. Um, Truth is hard to swallow, that's what the war of love is for. And you stop and then you do a slow open C, then a G7, then let go to a C, G7, to a C, then that little B7 G chord, then an open C, then the riff 2. It's not the way that you say it when you do those things to me and so on and the uh has all been meant for you at the end of that and then I'm looking for someone to change my life I've seen and then uh and then I've already explained the, the next part to you so Now, if you want me to send this to you via email, no problem, be happy to. No strings, just a thanks for watching type of thing. And uh, Here's the second part. It's a, a very long song, so I had to do it in uh, this formation. I have hundreds of songs uh, that are that's typed up in this format from various artists from the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, 90s. Uh, but if you want to request, you know, I don't need to give a lesson. I can just put it out there for you and say, hey, yeah, here it is. Knock yourself out. Thanks for watching type of thing. And, uh, you know, Beatles, Eagle Songs, Doobie Brothers, Zeppelin, CCR, Pink Floyd, Moody Blues, uh, just up and down the whole schmeal. But uh, anyway, I uh, hope that this has been a help, and uh, I hope that I've included any, any, everything. And if I didn't, why well, then I'll just include it in the annotations. And uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.